Okay, we're going to solve an integral today in a very uh, normal approach. Everyone usually does this method. So we're going to write sine x as the imaginary part of e to the i x. And if you don't know what that is, well, um, uh, I, I don't know. Okay, we can also take this imaginary part outside of the integral. And that's because the integral of an imaginary part is the imaginary part of the integral. And that's just because the integral is basically a Riemann sum. And everything converges so we can do that. And now this is just an integral of an exponential. Very, very easy to do. So this would just be 1 over i times e to the i x evaluated from 0 to pi on 2. And that would just be the same as e to the i pi on 2 minus e to the i 0. And e to the i pi on 2 is i. Okay. And now we just have the imaginary part of 1 on i times i minus 1. So let's just expand this out. We're going to get 1 here and then minus 1 over i. And 1 over i is actually minus i. And so we have 1 plus i. And we're taking the imaginary part, so that would just be 1. And there we go. The integral from 0 to pi on 2 of sine x dx is 1. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's do another one. This one is uh, a bit more cooked. Okay, we have the same bounds, but the integrand is this monstrosity. So if you want, you should probably see how you do this if you don't want to use complex numbers. But obviously, we're going to use complex numbers. So we can write cos x in this way and sine x in this way. And these are just the complex definitions of sine and cosine, which come from this, Euler's, this formula, which is called Euler's formula. Okay, so now what? Well, we just want to clean things up, right? So now let's try to rewrite this. If we just expand this all out and collect like terms, uh, we're going to get 3 minus 4i e to the ix plus e to the minus ix times 3 plus 4i. Okay, and now we kind of want to remove this e to the minus ix. We don't really like negative exponents in this case. So we'll multiply everything by e to the 2ix. And e to the 2ix is just e to the ix all squared. And that's good because now we can take this e to the ix inside this square and multiply out. So that would give this. Okay, now we just look at the denominator, specifically the thing inside the square. The derivative of that is going to be 2i times 3 minus 4i e to the 2ix. And so we just want to manipulate that in the numerator. And to compensate, we need to divide by it outside. Okay, so now we have it in a good form. We have in the form f prime over f of x squared. So we can just integrate this with the reverse chain rule. And that's going to give us uh, minus 1 over uh, this thing here from 0 to pi on 2. Okay. Now when we evaluate this, it's going to be minus 1 over uh, this thing and plus 1 over this thing. Okay, so e to the 0 is 1, and this would be e to the i pi, right? And e to the i pi is minus 1. Nice. So now we just have to uh, manipulate this a bit. So 4i minus 3, and this is 3 plus 4i. So altogether we have 8i in this denominator. And over on this side... Uh, what do we have? Well, we have 3 minus 4i plus 3 plus 4i, and that would just become uh, 6, I guess, yeah. And now maybe we should combine these fractions together. So now we just combine it to get 4i minus 3 on 24i. And as you can see, so this i and i would multiply to give minus 1, because i squared is minus 1. We can use that minus 1 to swap the order of the stuff on the numerator. And now we can just cancel these 3 minus 4i's. And we have... 2 times 1 on 24, which is 1 over 12. The integral from 0 to pi on 2 of 1 on 3 cos x plus 4 sin x squared is 1 over 12. And that was a very efficient solution, don't you think?